Guys, where have you been? It's been quite a while. Probably longer for me because I did have some videos went up, but I haven't made a video two weeks or something. You guys know I've been traveling for work. I just got back. Uh, this is actually the first video that I'm gonna shoot down here in the basement. We talked about it for so long, but the days here, it kind of sounds a little poopy because I don't have very much uh, noise dampening going on. If you could actually see behind you, it's literally a, a blanket fort. Uh, I got some acoustic panels on order, but I like the space. I don't know exactly how I want to set it up. If you got any ideas, let me know, but I got this nice standing desk or workbench now, real wood, so I don't, you can't make fun of me about my little fold-up plastic table. So much room for activities. And we got our plaque, 100,000 subscriber plaque. Thank you guys for that. That is that's something I never, I never thought was gonna happen, but here we are. And I think it's a good time today to just have some fun since we're back at it finally and try a video that I've been thinking about for a long time. It's one of those videos that I know <laughs> it's going to be hot garbage. It's not gonna work, but it's, it's also one of those things I've been thinking about and I wanna know how bad it's not gonna work. And that's what we're gonna do today. It's gonna be fun. Let's get at it right after this. This video is sponsored by Urbanista. Did you recently buy a new phone that, you know, has no headphone jack or simply doesn't even come with headphones? If so, I think I got the product just for you. Urbanista London earphones have amazing sound quality. They're sleek, compact, and enable you to silence the world around you with their active noise canceling mode. Alternatively, if you would like to remain aware of your surroundings while still enjoying your favorite audio, you can use their ambient sound mode. Urbanista London come in four colors, midnight black, rose gold, dark sapphire, and white pearl, all inspired by the brilliant and busy city of London. Their slim charging case can charge the earphones up to four times on a single charge and give you 25 hours of battery life in total. Urbanista headphones are also compatible with both iOS and Android touch and voice control, and they're IPX4 water resistant. The color I chose for my Urbanista London headphones is the Midnight Black. Reason being is that I normally use these at work connected to my PC and I just kind of like the low-key black look. Also, because I use these at work at my desk, I often have people stopping by with questions and the best feature in my opinion is that when you remove one or both of these earphones, they automatically pause your audio so you don't miss anything while you're not listening. So if you're looking for a high quality Bluetooth earphone with active noise canceling, look no further because Urbanista London's are what you need. Click the link in the description below to get your set today. So for this said video, we're gonna need this. This is the Photon Mono SE, uh, currently my favorite resin printer. A little dirty, but should work just fine. And this guy. So this is just simply the 120 millimeter radar that we've been using for all the fan showdown stuff. But you know, now we're using the air, air dryer, <laughs> air dryer, air cooler. So today we're gonna use this thing and let me show you what I think and what I think in here. But I bet you can probably guess what my, my idea here is. I wanna see, I wanna make a plastic radiator. I wanna make a plastic one from this resin printer and I wanna see how bad it is. Cause I mean, almost all radiators are aluminum. Um, it's copper if you get some high-end ones. And there's a reason for that, you know, metal is a great thermal conductive material. Plastic is not. But would a plastic one work at all? I don't know. And I also don't know. Oh, I think it'll fit. I think it will fit. Oh yeah. I'm gonna try to make something similar. Hopefully I also got enough resin. I do have white and transparent, so we'll start with white. If we run out of it, we'll just add some transparent to it and it'll just kind of be what it's gotta be, but it should be pretty funny to see how it works. Let's make a radiator first. Luckily for me, I've been thinking about this project for a while, so I already, I already have a radiator built or designed, I guess. So if we look at the EK120, uh, that's basically what the idea behind this was. It's not gonna be an exact match, but it's just gonna be a rough you know, model of it. Uh, the main dimensions we're trying to hit here is 120 millimeters wide by about 160 tall. Uh, I'm gonna have to probably shorten that up just a bit because I know that the printing window is like 130 by 160. So we want that to be, you know, hopefully fall within it. Hopefully it can print exactly 160 like it says it can. So we'll drop that down and hope for the best. Other than that, pretty simple how this, how this works. So if we just look down from the, well, let's say from the, from the back side here. So the water will come in one of these two sides here. It's gonna have to flow up through these channels. 
um, into the top side manifold and then back down and out. And essentially that's how pretty much, well, this style of radiator works. Now, thicknesses are a little different than they would be in a, Mac, or a metal radiator. I'm trying to make sure it doesn't leak. Uh, I got about a one and a half mil wall here. I just want it to be watertight. I don't know if it's gonna work at all, to be honest with you, but if it holds water, at least it's, at least it gets that part done. So now we're just gonna save it off as an STL file and try to slice it up and see if we can print it. One thing I do like to do normally though, before I just go all willy nilly and try to print this whole thing, especially now that I'm running low on resin, is I wanna print out just these fitting holes, just to double check that they fit. Uh, the, the only reason I won't do it this time is that if you've seen the distro plate video, this is exactly the same specifications I used. 11.8 millimeter diameter hole, uh, starting out at a quarter by 20 thread on inch tap, and then I changed the pitch to 1.337, and that should give us a perfect fit for our fitting. And I will be sad if it doesn't, but it's worked once, it should work again. So we have that sliced up. It's gonna take seven hours, probably eight. There it is, let's hope. Things go according to plan, first time around. And now we wait. Well, you guys don't, I do. It's gonna be a minute. I'll be back. problems. Eww. So everything was going splendid right right up until the end. If you put these side by side, uh, it's actually a pretty good representation of a radiator. The, the main difference being that my fluid tubes are slightly larger. And by slightly, I mean a lot. But anyway, the, the reason being is that I want to have a wall thickness thick enough that hopefully it wouldn't break and leak. But I also want to be thin, thin enough, I went for 1.5 mil, that it would uh, not be too gargantuan. Right at the top here, you see where it started to form the, the cap for the radiator? It actually pulled away from the thin edge, uh, the thin edge sidewall. Now normally you would print this on a bit of an angle to avoid that large surface area, but unfortunately this printer is just not big enough. So I had to print it flat up against the build plate, which was quite difficult to remove it, but uh, the problem really ended up being that uh, we had a little separation here, but we're not going to give up. We have a we have a plan, and that plan is going to involve some toothpicks, uh, 405 nanometer light, and some more of this resin. And what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to fill this gap. You know, I'm going to get well, I'm going to get a clamp. I'm going to try to fill the gap, pull it together, and then hopefully cure it and create a watertight seal. Because right now, if you put your thumb over the one hole and blow in the other. We're leaking up top. So we can't use it as a radiator until we get that fixed. So that is plan number one. So in my head, this works absolutely flawlessly. Like why wouldn't it? You put, you close up the gap, you put more resin in there, you cure it, you profit. Unless there's something I'm missing. I don't see a problem with this. There's our gap that we wanna close. Now, the idea here is I'm gonna take a little bit of that, try to fill the gap up, uh, cure it, rinse and repeat, and hopefully after some time, that will be full and therefore watertight. It's a little at a time. I don't want to jump the gun, but that seems like it's working better than expected. Just put a nice thin coat over the coat that we already put there just to fill in any cracks. All right, good news. I think that worked. Pretty, pretty darn good. A lot better than I thought it was. Uh, everything cured out pretty good. It's a little, you know, yellow or glossy now, uh, but it passes the, the air test. I don't, 
feel any air loss. Uh, so hopefully it won't leak that much or at all. That'd be awesome if it didn't leak at all. But anyway, now we got that done. We need to put some fittings on it, get the test bench up here and see if it actually can do anything when it comes to cooling. What do you think? Okay, I think we're ready. We got our plastic radiator right here with the fan attached, pump block, test bench, all ready to go. First, first step is fill it up, see if it leaks, hence the paper towel. So we'd be able to tell how much, if any, we're leaking. And if it doesn't, say we get real lucky, then we get to see if it works at all. So far so good. Let's just kick it on and off real quick. Oh, I see a little seep, just a little bit. I don't even know if we'll need to fix that little drop. It's barely making it down the fin stack. Cause let's be honest, do you think this is gonna work anyway? If we can keep it from uh, just thermally throttling, this is gonna be a win. I mean, it's a win that we made one anyway. And then it was a win that we were able to repair it to a point that it's functional. There's a lot of wins here. Let's put the lid on it before I drop it. I guess I didn't even check this is leaking. Looking good, looking good, looking good. Let's plug our fan in, give us the best shot possible. Oh yeah. There's air going through. Oh. Why? Why the updates? We don't have time for updates, Windows. Oh, Windows, why? Tis not the time for this. Cooper, it's not the time. I'm gonna let it ride. We're just gonna let it ride, Cooper. <coughs> Currently sitting at 31 degrees. 30 degrees. Now the question is, it's not really leaking too bad now. It is leaking, but once we start cranking up the heat, what is that gonna do to our resin, uh, resin print? Cause you remember I made the, uh, the distro plate and a lot of you guys are like, well, maybe when you heat it up, I don't know how that resin is gonna hold up. Well, we're about to find out now. So right now our temperatures still aren't looking that bad. Currently the benefit to uh, a plastic radiator is weight savings. Um, I could get it to not leak, but we'll say that the downside is that it's currently leaking. But you know, what are you gonna do? There's really no other up upsides to it. It's white, I guess. Like you can buy white radiators though, so that's not really that big of a plus. So we're coming up on 10 minutes. It actually looks like it's, it actually looks like it might be starting to actually level out. I don't know, I doubt it, but it kind of looks like it. But just in case you're interested, let's see how much air we're actually moving through this. Around 16.5 CFM. So we are moving air through there. Not an incredible amount, but will be enough to keep it cool. And can the radiate, can this plastic even radiate enough heat to keep a CPU cool? I don't know. So we're 20 minutes in and a shock to probably literally everybody is that we are not throttling yet. <laughs> we're still look, it still looks like we're trending upwards, but uh, we're still going and even weirder is that I can actually feel, not much, but I can feel a slight bit of heat on the backside of the freighter, meaning that there is thermal energy being dissipated. Obviously not much of it, but I'm not gonna lie. This is far, far more impressive than I ever thought that this would be. It was one of those projects you're like, I wonder, can you even print a resin radiator, a radiator out of plastic? And then if you could, would it even, would it even do anything? I, I honestly thought it was gonna act like there was nothing on the system, but as you can see, we're, we're doing things. If it makes it 30 to 45 minutes without throttling, my mind's gonna explode because I, I didn't foresee that. Did, did, you, did you foresee what's, what's transpiring right now? Ladies and gentlemen, I think, I think we've made history today because it's been over an hour and we are, we're still running. And although we are throttling a little bit, the emphasis is on a little bit because if we look at our statistics page, the current clock speed is 4,899 megahertz, and the lowest that we've seen is 4,699 megahertz, which means we've only lost 200 megahertz during those little tiny, little tiny throttling events that we see on the bottom here, which is insane. 
especially even more insane that this is a plastic radiator that was not even supposed to work, if I'm gonna be honest. And even weirder is that when we started this whole event, it was leaking and then through the power of heated water and magic, it's not now, which is crazy. We've invented a self-healing radiator, which is it's gonna be huge, uh, but that's amazing in and of itself. So here's the radiator that I modeled this after, and by modeled, I mean very loosely modeled this after. Uh, this is a Coolstream SE from EK, and this thing is about $65 on Amazon. And just to put it in perspective, the resin that I used to print this is about $34.99 for 1,000 milliliters. So this took about 215 milliliters, meaning it cost about $750. And I think that $750 is worth of performance. Would I do this? Do I, do I recommend putting a printed radiator in your PC build? Absolutely not. But it's interesting to see that it works. And this is a very unoptimized radiator setup. If I made these channels smaller, increased the fin density, I could probably get a little more performance out of this. Maybe enough to not even throttle, who knows? We could even make a whole series where you guys, you guys come up with radiator designs, I can print them out and see who can come up with the best one if we can prove this works to a extent that we can measure performance. This is insane. This wasn't supposed to work, but here we are. It's been fun. If you have any other crazy ideas for things you wanna see, just let me know because obviously I'll try just about anything. And sometimes it even surprises me. Till next time.